What's up everybody? I got a quick question for you. Actually two. Do you know what diapause is? And do you know how to implement it with your ants? Stay tuned. In this video we're going to go over this entire subject in its entirety and try to explain how diapause works for you new ant keepers and maybe for your experienced ant keepers that don't fully understand it. Watch the whole video and we'll get right into it. See you in just a second. What's up everybody and welcome back to SNE Ants YouTube channel. Like I said in the intro, do you know what diapause is and do you know how to correctly implement it with your ants? So, in this entire video, we're going to go over a couple of things and I have three colonies with three examples. We're going to start off with two things. The ants are doing great as you can see. They're both doing great. Um, this colony in particular is doing wonderful. This colony is doing fantastic. And this colony is chugging along and doing well itself too. The bad news is... And it depends on how you look at it, but the bad news is it's that time of year for ants to start going into diapause. Now, let's elaborate on this a little bit. We'll get on the subject of diapause itself in a few minutes, but let's talk about the channel and how this kind of works with ant channels. If you don't already know, ant species that are typically not in the tropics go through diapause. Now, we'll go through what that is in a second, but essentially the ants have a time of year where they go dormant and because this channel is centered around, centered around our ants this kind of leads to a lull in videos because uh, again when we go over it in a little bit more detail I can explain why but the ants are not active um, from a period of time typically about four to five months the ants are just dormant so there's kind of a lack in video production uh, because of that so I want to get you guys prepared um, for this. Uh, I actually promised myself this entire past year that I was going to upload one video a week, whether it be a short or a typical video, and I've done that. I uploaded a video every single week, and I uploaded a short every other week from that. Now that we're going into this uh, normal I would say normal cycle for ants especially for this colony this colony is a year old in august okay so i don't know if you can see the size but again if you're new here um this is the current size they have and this is just the actually you see the queen in center frame again here um but this is the size that uh my this particular colony is after one year this colony is also a year old um a little younger by a couple months um, and this colony is also a year old um, by, again, a couple months. So, oldest colony, um, middle child colony, and youngest colony. But they're all about a year old. So, you can definitely see the three different sizes I have here. They all have different circumstances. And, again, if you watched all my old videos, you'll know those circumstances. But this colony did fantastic. This was my first colony. Back into the hobby, I, as an experienced ant keeper already kind of know how this was um, supposed to go. This is the queen that struggled a lot her first almost, I would say four or five months um, being by herself. So this colony took off a little bit slower. I got this colony with the queen and six workers. And now you can see where she's at. I got this queen by her lone self. And now you can see where they're at and they're only there with some help from myself, thankfully. And I got this colony with a queen and six workers. So with these two being Pennsylvanicus, I can kind of gauge where they're supposed to be and the normal rate of growth. With this colony right here being Cassineus, this is a lot slower. This is a t probably your typical uh, Campanatus growth cycle. They say your first year is the longest because they are very slow to take off. Now, this colony in their first year, as you can tell, has exploded. Um, Again, if you're a long-time viewer, you have watched this. This colony is the same species, but because she was by herself and she struggled for, I would say, about four months, um, the colony is lagging behind, but they're in the cycle, the same cycle now as this one. So they're going to catch up to this colony pretty quickly. But because they have growth cycles and now this colony is getting into it, and so is this one after their first year, we're going to have lulls in video quality, or not quality, excuse me, video production, because there's honestly just not a lot to record with, you know, when they're in diapause. So let's go into that a little bit more. What is diapause? Um, the easiest way to explain this is 
Uh, it's pretty much hibernation for insects. Um, they don't move, they don't do a lot, they don't do any active hunting. Um, and they just, they ride out the cold um, in a very low active environment. They, they conserve a lot of energy. They try to stay warm as much as they can. Um, and they don't do anything, honestly. They just sleep, uh, essentially. And this is a great example here. Now, this area has been designated nest space for whatever reason. Um, and we're going to change that here soon. But these ants are just, they literally sit there and they don't do anything. Now, I'm sorry the plastic is a little dirty, but you can kind of see what, what's going on here. They don't move. They ball up in groups and they just sit there. Now, they do still move in diapause, but not very much. They conserve their energy. They eat as much as they can before diapause, and they just fill themselves up uh, to have food the entire winter. As you can see right here, this one right here is really full. Um, you have anywhere you can see where their um, thorax is huge. This is a very good spot where they have been eating and filling themselves up. Now, how do I know this? So over the past couple of videos, I've, I've noticed, and maybe we can get it on video, they may have moved all of them. And I don't honestly see any right now, which is strange. But in past videos, they're probably all in the back, way back there in the back. Yep, you can see the big group of them. So you see all the larvae in the very back that are just on the ground. And I know that's hard to see. Let me zoom out just a little bit. And hopefully right here on the, on the floor, they're all considered stage one larvae. In this particular colony, you have no pupae at all. There are no cocoons, no full huge larvae at all. And this is an indication that they're ready for hibernation. And what ants will do when they're getting ready for hibernation, they, they produce eggs and the eggs will hatch into stage one larvae, which again is back there, the very small larvae in the back, very dull, but not very shiny at all. And they will stay like that until winter comes and it essentially keeps them alive the entire winter. Um, and then when winter's over, they are fed and then they grow into normal ants. But when a colony is ready, they will completely just stop growing. There are no pupae in this colony at all. There are no full larvae at all in this colony. And this is what you want to look for if um, you're wondering if your ants need diapause or not. Now, tropical ants don't have, or yeah, tropical ants don't have this problem at all. They are active all year. They don't have any kind of diapause cycle in the tropics. It's hot all year. They don't get like a winter of sorts. So they're active all year. Fire ants, um, different types of species that go in the tropics. I'm not familiar with it because I'm on the East Coast, but um, I would say leaf cutter ants are a tropical ant. They don't have diapause. They just literally grow and keep growing all year. Um, they can have heat all year. Harvester ants are kind of in that same boat. Um, you can technically put them in heat all year and it doesn't really affect them a whole lot. But Campanata species and species that are from an area that normally gets winter or cold weather have to go into diapause. It's a part of their natural cycle. And I've had this colony on heat for three months and they have not grown any. They literally keep a huge pile of those stage one larvae in the back and that's it. Now, I'm going to show you a difference here. This is a one-year-old colony. They are fully, they've already gone through one cycle of diapause themselves, and they know what's coming, winter. Now let me show you the other Campanatus pennsylvanicus colony. If we go into theirs, you can see inside of that nest all stages of brood. So let me zoom in just a little bit. And again, I just cleaned this glass, but they have it dirty. So if you see on the ground there, you have full larvae full size larvae let me let me clarify those larvae are about the same size as those ants they are full sized and there are no stage one uh unless they're in the very very back which is the humidity is getting it very hard to see in there but there are eggs back there there are stage one yep right there where those two ants are sharing food bunch of eggs back there this colony is not ready for diapause you do not want to put a colony into diapause that has this stage of brood. If you do, it it will kill them. Um, these ants will die. The pupae will die. The full big larvae in the back, back there, will also die. So this is a good uh, visual indicator for you newer ant keepers that if you're wondering when is my colony ready, well at this stage, this colony right here, it's not ready. So what I'll have to do is, and if you can see they have all their brood on this one side, it's where I had the heat. So they're still accepting heat, they're still growing, they're still obviously making tons of ants. What I'll have to do is, I'll have to put this colony in diapause while this colony is not. And honestly, 
Um, I will have to put this colony in diapause, but not as soon as this one. This colony may go in in December once a lot of that brood hatches out. Um, I'll have to put them in diapause to get their cycle going, but this colony is already ready. You can see how many ants are in there, and you don't see any pupae at all. There's none. So this is a great indicator that they're ready. Let's go to this colony. This is the Cassineus colony here. As you can see in there, they're kind of in the same boat. They have a little bit of brood back there on the ground, just a little bit. There are a couple stages um, of uh, larvae back there under the back. Let me see if I can zoom in just a hair more. So if you can see back there, and I'm gonna try to keep the camera still, there are a couple different stages of um, brood back there. Just a few, um, looks like a, a stage one larvae, maybe stage two um, right there underneath that ant. Uh, you can see the queen up there on the top. She's just hanging out. But this colony is kind of in the same boat where they're also ready for a diapause. There are no pupae at all. And actually they have a ton of space still left to fill out. But the colony's really healthy. Um, I'm not going to say they're not because they're really healthy and they're still growing. I cleaned them out the other day even though their back corner is back corners kind of stained up and dirty. But um, I need to put this colony in diapause also. Um, they need to get in there and get their cycles going and have them ready. But as you can see here... This colony's not. Um, what we'll have to do is put both of these colonies, colony A and then colony B, both into diapause while this colony stays out and keeps getting heat until December. I'll probably put both of these colonies in at the beginning of October. So moving forward until they both come out of diapause, there's no really content to make. Now I will make a couple videos here and there um, regarding just ant keeping in general. But, and I'll give you updates on both of these colonies and kind of show you the progress of the diapause. But honestly, there's not a lot of content to be made when they're both in diapause. This colony you'll have a, a little bit of content with because they are not ready. So I can show you their, their growth. And um, once all these pupae hatch emerge out, we can uh, show you that. And as you can see, there's a couple workers up top. They're still, they're still taking food. They're still taking solid food, which is great. Um, and that's another point here. When you're getting these colonies ready for um, diapause, they usually stop taking uh, solid food, like if you're feeding crickets or roaches or fruit flies or whatever you feed your ants, they'll normally stop taking that kind of solid food. And um, this is a great example where I've fed them um, crickets. As you can see, you see a dead cricket here. Oh, I don't want to get my knuckles right here. And then you'll have the mealworms over here. They just stop taking it. Now this colony normally eats entire crickets by themselves. They'll take the whole cricket, they'll eat it, and there won't be any cricket left. The millworms are a little different, but you can see they're just not taking it. Now their nectar and their water, they are drinking big time. So great indi indicator that uh, this needs to go into diapause. So since we've covered that, I'm gonna show you how to put your colonies in diapause. Normally two methods. Um, and then a third and I will go over that in case you're new here or you've done this in the past with no success um, I'm going to show you the easiest route and it may not be every um, everybody's liking but this is how I did it with success um, and we will go from there so this will be really quick I'm going to show you how I do this um, and I kind of that's the entire update here of how this is going to work now I will explain a couple things before the video ends so I'll be right back welcome back this is what I use to put my ants in diapause. Now you may be wondering what this is. Well, it's actually just, it, it's a mini fridge. And I actually have the uh, queens in here um, that we talked about earlier, the Laceus Americanus. This is where I put them in their test tubes. It's not cold, it's not turned on at all. This is actually unplugged from the wall at the current moment. Um, but what we'll end up doing is to uh, mimic the winter. You want to put your ants in a cool, let me emphasize that, a very cool environment. You do not want to freeze your ants, you will kill them. I bought this mini fridge. This mini fridge is actually from Walmart. Um, it was a hundred bucks. So depending on your level of seriousness for this hobby, um, granted what we spend on care, caring for the ants, their nests, their food, I don't think this is a big ask um, from me or for anyone to be honest with you. And this is a multi-purpose thing. So if you buy this for diapause, you know, four or five months out of the year, you're using it to have, you know, your ants in. And then the rest of the year, you can leave it on, put drinks in it, do everything that you normally would with a mini fridge. So this is not a huge ask. And to be honest with you, this is a really good investment if you want to be, 
I'm not going to say serious about the hobby, but if you want to be uh, very passionate about it, and I am, I don't keep my house cool enough, and we'll go over that in a second, but let me show you something. So this is the setting for this fridge. So as you can see, and maybe you won't be able to, let me zoom in a little bit. You see this arrow right here? That's where the cool setting is. So this is off here, and this is, you'll hear it cut on, you hear the clicking right there. So I literally keep it on the lowest possible cooling setting. And let me, let me explain that a little bit. This is on the setting that it does not cool the most. So max is over here and this would get really, really, really cold. Over here, it cools, but barely. This is just to get it cooling up in the 60s. Knowing that if you freeze these ants, they will die. You do not want to have it on its max setting. You want to have it on its lowest possible cooling setting it has. Leave it on minimum, because it's a medium, or minimum, medium, high. Whatever mini fridge, you ain't got to get this brand. You, you know, you don't have to go to Walmart if you don't want. Look on Amazon. Um, but I just went to Walmart, my local Walmart, picked it up, or actually ordered it, and it came in the mail, and let it cool. You put your ants in. I put the whole setups in here. This is actually really deep, so to give you a little bit of a, you know, it's almost at my elbow. So this is a really deep space, and it actually has a second level here. I can put nests here and here and up here. So there's plenty of space in here and you know, you can see just how long these test tubes are. I actually need to clean these, but you can see how long these test tubes are and there's plenty of space in the back for these ants. So I put them in here, I close the door and I just leave them in there all, all season. Typically you want to do it around four months or so. Um, and then they're good to go. You know, I put them in, in, uh, let's say October. So no November, December, January, February. So I get them out in February, maybe, um, March last year I did March. So what I'll do is I'll put them in in October, get them out in March, and they're good to go. As um, long as you keep them now, again, let's, let's clarify that, you have to keep them watered. So once you put them in there, if you have the uh, water towers that, you know, that are in my colonies, keep them filled with water. Ants will travel out and get some water and travel back in. If you have a Tar Heels ant's nest, you have nest mates. Keep the nest mates full of water. These ants will die if you don't give them water. They're, they're insects. They're they will, you know, any kind of living creature will die without water. So make sure you keep them watered, but you don't got to feed them. Um, you can keep the nectar in there if you want to. I typically do, but they don't really touch it. Um, just keep the water filled. So let's go back to the colonies and we'll go over a couple more things. All right, we're back at the colonies. So as you can see, I can easily fit this whole nest in there, this whole nest in there. I can put this in long ways, so this way. And I, all I have to do is extend this uh, tubing right here, which I have plenty of extra tubing. Any normal ant keeper should have plenty of tubing laying around, if not ordered off Amazon. And I can bend it. I can install this, bend it whatever way I want to, and then this entire setup will go into the mini fridge. And I will leave them on the entire time they're in diapause. I'll make sure that these nest mates are filled with water at all times. I'll make sure the main nest has their water tower filled. Um, and then I will keep both the mini nectar feeders filled as well. Let's go over a couple other things before we end this video. Again, you will see this colony again before the end of the year. Um, I'm going to give updates on how their uh, brood is doing. This colony will be going into diapause in October. So this colony is probably um, the last time you will see them before next year. So say goodbye, you will get an update at some point about their diapause updates. But this is the last time you'll see this colony out um, on the counter. This colony, again, you're gonna get updates on. And to be honest with you, this is the last time you will see probably the main colony as well. Say your goodbyes. They will be fine. They will die. Some of them will. Um, it's just a part of the, the cycle. They will die. The older ants will die off. Um, and that will just be the way it works. But let's touch on this colony real quick before we end this video. I do have a new nest coming in from Tar Heels for this colony. Now knowing after talking to Mac that this colony is ready for diapause, um, it throws a little bit of a kink in the uh, production I was gonna do. So the plan was to get in the nest. Um, I am gonna do a video on the nest for everybody, but then I was going to move this colony into that new nest. Well, knowing they're ready for diapause and um, a lot of the ants just like to hang outside as you can tell usually this this nest right here is packed out 
Um, but the, as you can see, they do have some room. Um, they're not fully packed in like they normally are. Um, they are actually hanging out out there. But what I'm going to do is the new nest will come in. I've already ordered it. It's already coming in. I'm going to do a video about the new nest. I have to size it up to see if it's going to be appropriate because I've like you told you guys in the past, you don't want to give um, your ants too big of a space that they can't handle. It's rest as a mount. But I'm hoping that this colony is big enough now where yes, there will be a plenty of room, but they won't be crammed in together. Um, and they will have plenty of space to kind of roam around and do what they want. I will eventually have to move this colony into that new nest. Um, I will have to do that honestly probably after diapause is over at this point because we're so late into the season um, I can't justify moving them be before diapause. I don't want to risk uh, killing the whole colony doing that. What I'll have to do is I'll have to put this outworld into the um, mini fridge to get them all cooled down um, and I'll have to ruffle them up a little bit to see if they all go into the nest but I'm eventually going to have to at some point before the end of the year um, clear this entire outworld out but to get try to get all these ants out clean it and then um, once all the ants are out um, I'll put the, the outworld back in they can obviously have to put the ants back in um, and then what we'll have to do is try to devise a plan to get this entire colony in here to move into the new nest that's the unfortunate part I only have one entrance currently on this outworld just this one there is no entrance on that back end or on the sides. So typically what you would do is you plug, in, uh, plug into a second port in the outworld, put the new nest in, and then hopefully all the ants would move into the new nest from the old nest. Now I do have uh, extensions here and here. The issue is I don't want to, I don't want the ants to keep this as a nest. I want them all to move into the new nest, stay there, and then clear this out hopefully for these guys or these guys. I'm hoping it's these guys, but if these guys have not gotten any bigger um, before next year when we do this, uh, it may end up being this colony that pops into this nest next uh, because these ants are just not growing as fast as I thought they would. And they got plenty of chambers that they just honestly don't use at all um, versus where almost every chamber here is used. So. Be on the lookout for the new nest update that's going to come in. I'll do an unboxing and review of that. Um, it's a custom order from Mac, so I'm a little excited to see what it looks like. And it's going to be something different than he's made before. So um, you do have something to look forward for that. But as far as this colony and this colony uh, for the year, you may not see a lot of these two anymore. Um, that, may, that may be the end of it. And then you may be seeing this colony again soon. So sorry for the bad news. Um, hopefully, you know... This video has kind of explained to you how the diapause process works, um, how to implement it with your ants correctly. Um, and sometimes this process doesn't go as planned. You put them in diapause, they all die. I have not had that happen with my colonies yet. Um, and hopefully I don't, but it does happen. So if you do put your ants in diapause and they all die, just be aware that that is a, an outcome that could happen. But hopefully if you, if you do go the mini fridge route and you do keep it on its hottest setting, that won't be a problem because if you freeze your ants, they're going to die regardless. So don't do that. Keep your nest hydrated. Keep them just, just cool. You don't want to keep them cold. You want to keep them cool and let them go into diapause for about four months. You should be set for next year. So that's the end of this video. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. This has already been pretty long-winded, but hopefully you got some uh, good information out of it. Hopefully you learned something. That's the whole process and point of this channel is to teach you guys how to be better ant keepers. You're already good, how to be better. So, until the next video, I will see you guys later. Hey, Peace. If you enjoyed this video, check out this recent upload of this recommended video. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button in the middle of the screen. And if you like what you just watched, hit the like button. It really helps the channel out. If you have any other suggestions or ideas, comment down below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.